Howdy, everybody. Hello. <laughs> are, are we good, Tony? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Looks like it. Okay. Hopefully everything's good. Tony just did like the slowest countdown ever to get us going here. We weren't, we weren't sure what was happening. But we are here. Hope everybody is having a lovely day. It has been sunny the last few days, which has been real nice. Yes, yes, not uh, quite as cold. Because last week was dreary. Dreary? Well, it wasn't dreary. It was snowy and freaking cold. Well, I I consider that the same you thing. You consider Denny. that it's, dreary? It's all dreary. Okay. I don't like being cold. To a song, have you ever seen the rain? And yes, we've we have. seen it. We've seen it. <laughs> Saw it. Not as much as Seattle though. They got the they got the ice storm this year. We we had our fair share back in like what was it two thousand and seven? Yep, I think it was. Yeah, seven. yep. That was a that was a fun week. Mm-hmm. I was out. Of, I lived on my farm then. We were out of power for fourteen days. Did you have a fireplace? We had a fireplace. No, we had a wood stove. Yeah, but that didn't help a whole lot. <laughs> no. We went over to my in laws. They had a generator. Mm. Living it up. They had hot water and everything. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, um, we're really reliant on our. You know, I was thinking about that. I was, I was thinking about when all this happened. Um, I was thinking about how much of a recent thing it is for all of us to be so reliant on, like, public work systems. Yeah. Because for forever, you just did your own thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you built your fire. Like everybody had fireplaces. Like there mm-hmm. wasn't this like worldwide electric situation and now that's what we have and we're all just real screwed when things go yeah, down yeah because we don't know how to be self-sufficient anymore yeah even out on the farm because everything relies on a, an electric pump or, yeah or gas of some sort yeah water is important yeah so in any case guys hopefully everybody's doing outside or doing okay this week if anybody you know did have to deal with crazy outside things hopefully it's melting at this point yeah uh, yeah, so Denny finished up his master's class. Oh, yeah. Is what yeah. I'm going to call it. His master's class. His master's class um, for tooling. And we said, you know what, Denny, that was a lot of fun and people really enjoyed it. Why don't we do the beginner's one so that yeah. everybody can learn how to start? And so he's like, well, yeah, we could probably do that. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Yep, this is just basic. If you can do this, you can do what we did in the, the master's class. Exactly, yeah. Just adds a few more tools, a few more techniques. But anyway, should we get started? Uh, I think so. Okay. What we're going to do, and I don't know, have you got overhead, Tony? I do. Would you like me to switch to it? If you wouldn't mind. Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, look. It's not too bright. Okay. We have four different patterns here that I generally start off Mm -hmm. with in the, the, I call it the novice class because no one wants to be called a beginner. Okay. You know, so everybody's a novice. Everybody's a novice. But I've got four different patterns, and, and we don't always get through all four of them in the, in the uh, novice class, but uh, we get through generally at least three. All right. But we're going to start off with number one, and that's probably the only thing we'll get done today. But, but still, it will teach you how to use all of these tools. There are seven basic tools that we have here, seven basic stamping tools, plus a swivel knife and a set of wing dividers. You want to tell us about your tools? Yes, I will. Okay. I will. We start off here, well, we start off with a swivel knife, which is a basic swivel knife. Any Anything you have will do, as long as it, you can get a good, sharp, polished edge on it. Okay. Then we have uh, a beveler. This is a PB013. And it is a steep beveler with a checkered face on it. A PB013. Yes. Okay. And if you have a different beveler, that's, that'll do, but it should be a steep beveler. You know, the, the old style flat bevelers don't do very good in this type of pattern. Okay. Next is a parashader, and this is a small uh, checkered face parashader. There again, if you've got a smooth face pear shader, that'll be fine, but the smaller the better. And what's that number? What's your number? This is, a, it doesn't say. This is a P217. P217. Then we're jumping up to a flower center. And uh, <clears throat> a flower center with a beveled edge on it like this one it is preferable. If, if you see the edge of that, it's it's actually beveled. It doesn't just come out and square off. 
and you will see later on why that's important. But this is a PJ040. PJ040. And the size doesn't matter near as much as the shape of that, uh, that tool. Next is a Vayner. This is a V715. And it is just a, it's a serrated Vayner, but it's not scalloped. And it's fairly straight. It doesn't have a lot of arc to it. And that's preferable in what we're going to do, and you will see why later. Then we've got a backgrounder. This is an A888. And basically any backgrounder you have will work. Uh, I, I really don't uh, differentiate, but, but that's the one I've got here. So that's the one we'll be using today. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> next is a mule's foot. This is a U851. And it is just a very small mule's foot. Just the smallest mule foot you've got will work. <laughs> and lastly, we've got a camouflage tool. This is a C830. And about any camouflage you have, a fairly small one would be the best. Okay. I've got, I generally hand out two pieces of paper. One is, a, it has a tool progression, and that will be the order that we use these tools in and what they're used for. And I will go through each one separately as we go today. You're so yeah. fancy with your little pamphlet and everything. Am I not? I, it's <laughs> he's amazing. Not that, he's not that fancy because I made him a whole thing with all of this printed out so nice and beautiful. They are gone. <sighs> yeah, we need to print more. Yeah. I feel like I'm always telling Tony, we need to print more. We've got our free patterns up front, and I'm like, Tony, we need to print more. <laughs> all the time. Okay, and lastly, this sheet has all four of these patterns on. These four. I used to do round coasters, but I got tired of those, so now we're doing square ones. All right. And, and I like kinda, squares. They're kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, each one of these are numbered. One, two, three, and four. Uh, and we use these. These are a tracing pattern. And I always tell people you can at home you can do this several different ways. One way is to take a piece of uh, tracing film, put on here, trace over it with a pencil, mm -hmm. cut it, cut it out, and then trace over it on your leather. Or you can do it like we're going to do it today. You can just take packing tape, and I don't know if you can even see the shine on this. Oh, there's a little bit right there. Yeah, but I have actually taped the whole back side of this with just regular packing tape any kind of packing tape you have uh, don't use painters tape because it won't stick to this as well as you need to okay and, and it's not as waterproof is what we're looking for and that's that's the main thing I'm looking for here is waterproof because you're going to be setting these patterns on a piece of wet leather that's right so I've I've taped all four of these and I'm going to cut out the first one, which is number one, you guys, <laughs> number one. And I'm just going to cut on the outside line here. Troy wants to know how you keep your tools so shiny. Oh, well, I don't drag them through the dirt a lot. He keeps them in this cute little deerskin pouch. Yeah. Yeah. And I, on my bench, I've just got a set of holes up there that they all go in. I try to keep them in a definite order and that's what I, I have all these tools in an order the order of which we're going to use them in i believe <laughs> that's the way i have them on my bench that way after because a lot of times you'll you'll be working on a project and uh, you'll get called away or it, you go eat lunch or whatever and then you come back and you say where was i yeah well the last tool is on your bench so you put it back in its little hole and look at the next slot over and that will be the, the tool that you're going to be using. And yes, this is a lovely blue glow. We've got, we got our LED lights over the weekend. So we came in yesterday and Tony painstakingly put them up all day yesterday. We're getting there. We've got our brackets ordered. Rusty supposedly, if you're listening, Rusty is going to bring us some shelves. We have some brackets for some new shelves and, and that kind of thing. So we, we're working on it. It's getting there. And that's going to be glowy too eventually. Okay. Next 
if if I was working on a specific project, I would probably tape the back of this too uh -huh. with, with the same packing tape. A lot of people will use painter's tape, and that's fine too. I like the packing tape myself. But since this is just a, a, a class project, uh, I'm not going to tape it. Plus, it's fairly heavy, heavy leather, and it's not going to stretch too bad. Yeah. If you're needing to fit two of those together at the end of the day and they're already cut, you'd want to tape it. Yeah. Because it's yeah. going to stretch. Yeah. If, yeah, after I... After I tool this, if I put it on top of this one, it would be a hair different shape, different uh -huh. size. But I'm going to take and, and wet this. I'm just going to spritz it with water. You can use a sponge and a, just a bowl of water if you want to. I like to spritz mine. But I don't want to just saturate it, but I want to get it fairly wet here to begin with. And if you will look, I don't know, Tony might to... Might to Put this tool progression sheet up online for you but the first step that I'm going to do is wet the leather which I just did and we're going to scribe the border with a set of wing dividers and to do that I'm just going to set my wing dividers at the width of this border hey Denny yes you never guess what's wrong with the printer what it's jammed it's jammed is it uh, raspberry or boysenberry <laughs> uh, cranberry today cranberry yeah. jam all right jam. all right that happens i'm gonna print it on this printer in here so hang on just a second okay okay i've done step number one which is wet the leather and scribe the border with the wing dividers and i forgot to mention the wing dividers to you guys when i was going through hold the on tool. hold on just a second i don't know if i can hear you Always need your wing dividers. Yes. This is in circle form, but. All right. Yeah, and this is this this is basically the same pattern that we're doing right now, only it's the old circular style. And he has. Do you have the tool? The what? Yes, you do have the tool progression here. That's great. All right. I shared it in all the chats, so look in the comments section. Okay. <coughs> Live chat comment section. Okay. You might want to uh, print a set of these square patterns for them, too, at some point, since that's what we're doing today. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. Step number two is I'm going to cut the border with a swivel knife. Now, a swivel knife, you guys are all beginners, so I'm going to kind of go through something with you here. This is called the, the cradle or the yoke of the swivel knife, and I like to hold mine about like this. I don't want to get it up here like this or over like that. Just, just about that first knuckle is where you want it. And this is your motor on your swivel knife. These finger and your thumb are your steering wheel. <laughs> that's, that's the way I like to explain it okay. because this is where your power is coming from if you push down it will actually start moving the swivel knife <clears throat> and you will probably want to get a piece of scrap leather and practice on this but you hold your swivel knife tip it forward just a bit but not side to side you want to tip it forward a bit and just follow that border line that you cut ideally you want to cut about halfway through the leather Hey, Denny, can I ask something of you? Certainly. Can, are you able to cut like that so we can see the tilt on your the tilt on your blade? If I get over here like this, maybe. can you see that? Yeah. Okay. I'm just cutting all four sides of this uh, border. When you're when you're trying to cut a straight line. If you will watch where you're getting ready to cut and don't worry about what you've already cut, you will get a lot more harmonious outcome to this. Much like driving a car, look where you're going, not where you've been? Yes. Okay. Yes. If the minute you look where you've been, you take your concentration off of what you're doing. And uh, you've already, if you've messed up, you've already messed up anyway, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. Christian, Do we can send you, we can send you some specs on it. I mean, that's, it's not a hard assembly. So, I mean, and then you just need to decide where you want to put the pouches yourself. So we can, we can take some pictures of it and send you some specifics and I assume that you can go from there. Worry about the two? No, they're, they're wanting, um, the big organizer that used to hang behind us oh, on the wall. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Next, I've got the border cut. I always cut the border before I 
trace the pattern. And the reason for that is, and a lot of people might do it a lot different, but the reason for that is when I'm drawing these lines, when I get to that outside border, I can kind of feel that, that cut line that I've already made and I can stop there sometimes. <laughs> you don't want to cut past that border if you can help it. But, uh, yeah, or mark past it because yeah. you're always going to be able to see it. Right. And I forgot to bring a dead weight. Oh, I can help you with that. Okay. But anyway, when I'm tracing this, I'll always start with the large features, which, which in this case will be the flower. So I'm going to trace that pattern first. And I'm using a ballpoint pen. I don't want to use a pencil or a scribe. A lot of people will use a scribe, something like that. But on paper, uh, that will kind of tear the paper, kind of bunch it up. Especially if the paper gets the least little bit damp. But the ballpoint pen will actually roll on this paper. Okay, now I've got the flower traced. Next, I'm gonna. Next, we have a, a stem here, the flower stem, and I've got that marked. I've got a little V marked there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I've got a little V marked. I'm not going to trace that V because I know what it is, but I put that V on there so you folks can see. But I'm going to trace out this flower stem. And you guys, I know you're not going to be perfect with your tracing, but come as close as you can. Because if you get a lot of really odd shaped lines in there, later on you're going to say, where am I? <laughs> and no one can help you. I'm sorry. Okay, I've got the, the flower, the stem, and I've got this one chicken neck, <laughs> turkey neck, done. So next I'm just going to go around the inside of the flower and trace all these lines. Okay. Um, let's see here, somebody had a question about, they bought some elephant, and they're wanting to make a wallet, and they're wondering if you need to seal it up. Um, not necessarily, most exotics are going to be like a finished chrome tan, but they might have like an open finish. Which does a lot, like a lot of times with elephant, it's not heavily finished. You don't have uh, a heavy, and so sometimes, especially with black, that color can bleed a little bit on you. So you might just, you know, spritz it with some quick shine. I would probably do a spray on finish like quick shine um, or Saddleac with elephant because it is so like porous and you've got so much texture on the top. So that'll kind of get you all of that texture covered up where a wipe on finish might be too much. You might get too much down yeah. in all those spots. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, you don't have to finish it, but it can't hurt to finish it. And also, if it's black and your color is bleeding, then you just might want to finish it. Right. So, <laughs> those those are all the things. Okay, I've got all these inside chicken necks traced. Now I'm going to go to the outside and trace all these lines. And if you'll notice, I think you can notice what I just did. I've come all the way around here. I didn't start with this line and go all the way back because this is the line that comes all the way around and this little short one just goes to that. Mm -hmm. That's the way you want to cut these lines too. Okay, now watch this. This this line goes all the way around. All the way. And this little short line cuts to that. This line will go all the way through. And this one will cut to it. This line goes all the way through. Cut to it. You guys think this is silly, the way I'm talking about this, but if you don't do this, if you cut it the other way, it's not going to look right. So, anyway, there I have my pattern traced. All right. That is step number three. Step number four, it says lightly set the flower center. And that's this tool right here. If you'll notice, I didn't draw a flower center on this flower because you might use a different size flower center. And the reason I need to set it now is because we're getting ready to cut this pattern with a swivel knife. And, and I, won't know, yeah, I won't know where to cut these petals to unless I have this line. Hello there. <laughs> Got a Luna nose popping up out yeah. of the table. But I just set that pretty lightly. And the reason is we're going to reset it later on. 
but I need to do this so I know where to cut to. I, we had a real quick question about our picture in the background over there, so I got the other camera on it, so oh. I can readjust it. We'll answer that question. Okay. So that's our. It's our puppy dog. Not, well, it's not. It's not any of ours. Yeah, it's not Luna. It's just a painting that uh, inmate did for us. Yeah. And Chris is outside the door, so now Luna's gonna have a fit. Hey, Luna. It's okay. Okay. Next step is we're gonna cut Hold the on. pattern. It's, Hold on just a second. Okay. Don't do that part yet. I gotta, um, I gotta yes. readjust. So Can real fast talk? on on this whole. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go so ahead. we're all having an, an elephant conversation. Um, <laughs> there are certain countries. So most of our elephant comes out of Zimbabwe. Oh, I'm sorry. All of our elephant comes out of Zimbabwe. I don't want to say most because that's not accurate. All of it comes out of Zimbabwe. They have government sanctioned programs for controlling the herds in that country because. The farmers and the elephants aren't really the best of friends. So there is some elephant herd control, which is where the hides come from. Um, the reason that it's okay to have the skin and not the ivory is because no elephant is being killed for its skin. Um, and elephants are being killed for their ivory and then they just leave the, the rest of the animal to rot. And so that's poachers doing that versus um, when it comes to the government stuff, you're taking the old and maybe the extra rambunctious bulls that are um, terrorizing the farms in that area. So is it a perfect system? No, it's not. There is no perfect system for us living with massive if animals. If it was perfect, and, you guys wouldn't have any elephant hide. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it is that it is what it is. Most of our elephant is scrap from the boot industry. So any elephant that we acquire is typically left over from boot companies that are importing into the United States. And then we buy the stuff that doesn't work for whatever it is that they're doing. So that's the elephant spiel that I've got for everybody just right now. Penny, it is being recorded. And some of the money that they do recover from selling the skin does go back to the tribes. To the tribe yeah. and preventing against against the poaching. Yeah, some to help the I don't know what the Zimbabwe animal wildlife. protection, yeah. wildlife. In any case, stuff, that's stuff and things. That's what we have on elephant. So yeah. Stropping. Okay, yeah. Now I'm gonna strop now my you swivel can talk knife. More. I'm stropping my swivel knife just a little well, bit. Well how do we want to strop our swivel knife, Denny, since we're in novice class? Okay. This is just a i I've got my piece of leather mounted on a on a piece of quarter inch plywood, but you can just use the back of any piece of leather. I generally use the rough side mm -hmm. and uh, scrub a little bit of jeweler's rouge on it. And if you'll notice your swivel knife has a, a beveled angle on it. I'm going to go really close up to where your, where your thing is there. Okay. So go to your, your uh, cake part there. Okay. If you'll notice the you kind of see bevel on this knife it it's beveled on each side so you want to hold your knife at about that same bevel it doesn't have to be perfect and just pull it backwards then turn it over pull it backwards do not go like this and wipe it up because if you do you're dulling the edge but just eight or ten strokes on each side is all you need to do what you're doing is polishing that edge cleaning cleaning any Debris, as they would say in, in England, debris. <laughs> Are you Even practicing your, your proper yes, English? Yes, I am. Yeah, Angela, you did. You got most of it. You, you're you awesome. Good job. She started Thanks. the story a time or two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay, now we're at step five, which is to cut our pattern with a swivel knife. Now, when we trace the pattern, we started with the flower. Then did the stem and then all the, the stickers or chicken necks around the inside and then went to the outside. And I'm going to cut it the same way. I'm going to start with this flower. doesn't matter if you start with the outside of the petal or the flower center. It doesn't matter. So, so when, you're, when you're cutting, Denny, can you talk about like the flow of the flow of the cut just a little yeah, bit? Yeah. You, on the flower, everything wants to... Uh, to follow, if you follow through with each cut, it will want it to go right to the center of this flower. I'll show you what I mean here. All right, now I stopped my cut right there. If I would have followed through with that, it would have ended up right dead center of that flower center. So the, the flowers, everything concentrates on the center. All the vine work, everything concentrates on the center of the vine, which is always going away from you. 
So you have to keep that in mind. The different colors of jeweler brood, uh, we only carry the one or do we have a couple different colors? We just carry the white. Just the white. We used to carry red. That used to be kind of standard of the industry. Everyone carries white now. I, I don't know why they don't carry the red, but... Uh, I mean, you can still buy them. You can go to Harbor Freight and you yeah. can buy the whole set. You can get the green, red, and the, the white. Yeah. The white, I think, is the most fine, or is the red the I most fine? I believe the red is a little finer, Okay. but not enough that uh, it will make a, any difference with what we're doing. So just get white or red. Mm -hmm. uh, green is a little too aggressive for what okay. we're doing, I think. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I've cut the flower stem. Now I'm going to start cutting these chicken necks around the outside. Now I want to say something right now. I'm going to cut this line right here. And it ends up right here, right? Mm -hmm. out, in the, out in the middle of nowhere. I see that, yep. I'm not just going to stop that line. I'm going to let up on my knife and just float that out into a hairline. Like your little fingers in the way, but... Can yeah. you see what I did there? It well, you did it with kind of both of them. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, mainly those lines, those lines that end up out in the middle of nowhere, you don't want to just stop them blunt. Mm -hmm. It looks like you just cut that stem off right there. We don't want any cut stems. Yes, we want tapered that's stems. Right. Now I'm just going to go all the way around the in inside of this flower. Maybe take us away. <laughs> Am I okay? Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, sometimes with such a small project, guys, it's hard because Denny still has to hold the thing that he's working on. <laughs> um, let's see here. Holly said that she has problems with her jeweler's ruse. It just crumbles. She, she has a hard time getting it to, like, come off and make such a nice surface. Do you have any tricks for people that I have just, crumbly? I just scrub it on there like a, it, like a piece of chalkboard chalk. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what it feels like. And just scrub it on there and, and let it turns to powder. I guess, Holly, I get, I, I'll ask, like, what, how old is your jeweler's rouge? Is it maybe a little extra crusty? Do you need to get some new? I don't know. It could be if it's set around and dried up a lot. It could be that you just need to replace it, and that's why it's just crumbling so much when you go to try to use it. Oh, yeah, your hand is difficult. <laughs> I'm trying to do this without my hand. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's hard to hold on to your stuff. And if you can hold it right there and just kind of cut it that, <laughs> just right, just right like that. Don't move from that spot. Am I still okay? Uh, you'll be fine. It's maybe two years old and I keep it in a medicine bottle. It might be time to get some new rouge. I don't know if it's always been like that or if this is just like, a, oh, it's getting real crummy right now. Just, it's pretty cheap. Denny, when you're cutting with your swivel knife, how do you know that your moisture content is okay. wrong? Okay, if your maybe knife... Say it's, maybe say it's better if it's wrong, so that's easier to... Yeah. When you're... The leather... When you're cutting your leather and your knife starts to drag... There can be two things wrong. Either you're too wet, too dry, or your knife needs to be stropped. If if you've just stropped your knife and your knife is still dragging, you're probably too dry or too wet. You know, it's not just ide right. Ideally, okay, look at these two pieces of leather. This one, had, I put no moisture in. This one I did, but it's mm -hmm. starting to dry back out to almost... It looks about the same. Yeah, yeah. but there's moisture in it. Yeah. To me, it's perfect right now to cut. If you if you keep adding moisture to it when it really doesn't need it, pretty soon you're just going to saturate the leather and you're going to have... The only thing you can do to, to make it right is to let it dry back out. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but Denny's not necessarily hitting the line exactly as he goes. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. You don't have to. Just Because just... it's going to it's gonna get covered up with all the other tooling. Yeah. So if you feel like maybe your tracing was a little bit funky or it wasn't quite where you wanted it, or it was maybe a little bit rough as you're going around because maybe the tape was in the way or whatever, just you have your outline 
just make like make it look good. Yeah. It doesn't. You don't have to trace it exactly because you're going to be covering it up with everything else. Yeah, I tell everybody that you can cut a lot smoother line than you can draw on mm -hmm. this wet leather because the wet leather, some parts of it will be a little more porous than others, and your your drag pencil, or your pencil or pen will just go offline. But just smooth it out with your swivel knife when you cut it. Yeah. All right, I've got the pattern cut here. That's step number five. Uh, do you have a piece of dry leather here that hasn't taken any moisture content? What's it look like when you cut it, when you try to cut? For one thing, your your cuts won't to uh, open up like they should. You can just oh, but right back where I had You see goes. that? And I put just as much, probably more <laughs> pressure on it than I did on on this. And you could see, you could see his knife jump jumping just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. What about if it was over wet? Can you show if it was over wet? I'll try. We haven't let it dry long enough. All right. I just I now wet ever... this. It's too wet right now because I just did it and it hasn't had a chance to temper. Yeah. But oh, it's just very. Oh, there you go. Oh. Yep. You, you can see the way it mushed yeah. up the edges on it. Yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll spread. It'll just kind of open it up and let it hang open. No, Holly, I, Denny never really soaks his leather. Yeah, that you know, people used they used to call it casing their leather. They would actually saturate it in a kitchen sink or a bucket of water or whatever bathtub. Who knows? However big and, it was. Yeah, and actually saturate it, and then they said wrap it in a plastic bag or something and put it in the refrigerator overnight. Well, in the morning, you take it out of the refrigerator, and what you have is a soaked up piece of leather, <laughs> and you can't do anything with it until later that afternoon when it dries out enough that to, that it to, that you can cut it decently. You yeah. know, so I just I just spritz my leather. Okay, I've done step five. Now step six is to bevel the pattern, and I, can I put that on there without being in my own way? Um, hands up. Oh, hang on. Talk, yeah. talk about your bevel before you do it so I can switch. I'm going to. We're gonna I'm squeeze. going to. Hold on. Oh, uh, real fast. Uh, Sherry had a question about ceramic blades. So do you want to maybe give them your two cents about ceramic blades? Uh, ceramic blades are great. They're great. As long as you don't drop them and chip them. Uh, you still will need to strop them. Uh, Jim Linnell was here uh, a couple of months ago, and he uses a ceramic blade exclusively. Yeah, but he still strops it, and not necessarily to get it sharp because it's already sharp, but it gets any of the the stuff. When you're cutting on a piece of leather, it'll pick up oils and, and any kind of crud that okay. gets on it, and it'll build it up. But if you strop it, it cleans all that stuff. So off. strop it just with Jewelers Rouge? Yeah, same same way okay. you would strop a steel knife. Okay. And you know, I don't but use But they're also a lot more delicate than yeah. a steel knife. Like, they're, you can't drop a ceramic blade or... They're more delicate, they're thicker than, mm -hmm. a, than a lot of, uh, if you will look at my blade, I like a fairly thin blade. Well, uh, you probably can't Tony's changing it. cameras, hold on. <laughs> All right. uh, is that good enough for you? Yeah, but if you will see the edge of my blade. Go back to your leather just a little bit. There you go. My blade is fairly thin. A, a ceramic blade is fairly thick. Mm -hmm. It will, it will produce a, a lot wider open cut. But if I'm wanting, if I wanted a wider cut than what I've got right now, I would sharpen the bevel on this a little bit more, uh -huh. where, where it would be more like this instead of like this. Okay. Because that will, will spread your cut apart. But this is about the way I like it, the way I've got it right now. Most blades you get right out of the package are sharpened at a fairly good angle. You know, so if you just drop them up good, they're ready to use. Yeah, and when Jim talked about it, he said, use what use what knife you're comfortable with. It's not it's not the blade that's doing the job. Mm -hmm. It's the experience that you put into it. That's exactly right. All right, now this I don't have on my paper. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a scribe, and I'm going to make a pinpoint in all of my background areas. And I would suggest that you guys do this, too. I'm getting ready to tell you why as soon as I get this done.
Um, somebody asked about ruby tip blades, and it's the same as a ceramic. Yeah. Like, same. they're very expensive. They're also, I feel like, probably maybe a little bit more on the delicate side of things. Um, and yeah, you know, you can use one, and it'll work. But it's not, like, it's your experience that's going to make the leather do what you want it. It's not the tool that you're using. Exactly. People, <laughs> people are looking for a way... For a tool that does a job, they're trying to for cheat them, the system, but does a job for them. Yeah, it's and really just practice. All, all the ruby tip, the ceramic tip, the steel tip blades. All they're going to do is cut the leather. That's right. And you still have to practice. Cut it like you. Make <laughs> it cut it. Okay. Now the reason I mark these background areas is because if you will look here, I've got all the background areas actually stamped, but those. Background areas have to bevel down. Uh, Tony, can you go to the top? Okay, thanks. Yeah, they have to bevel down. Now, this is actually the part of the tool that does the work. This, all it does is rest against your line. So this background area right here, I would put my tool like... Oh, like, okay. Like this, against the... Against oh. the hang on, hang on. Okay against the cut that way when I bevel it it'll it'll go around like that and bevel this background area down now every line in here almost every line I believe touches a background area if any part of that line touches the background area it has to bevel on that side of it has the to line. bevel on the background side every time mm -hmm. no matter what and I told people this in, in the advanced class. If you ever bevel a line part way on one side and the other part on the other side, I will slap your hands. <laughs> it, I remember somebody said that they figured out that they were beveling on the wrong side and had to switch halfway through because they were fixing it. Well, if, if you do switch halfway through, go back and, and bevel it on that, that just, whole line on just that side it. again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's nothing else you can do. But the first thing I'm going to bevel will be our uh, our borderline. And see, there's background area right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bevel this borderline on that side. Bevel towards the background. Yeah. Crash. I'm not quite there. sure what that was. Uh, maybe the water cooler because somebody's trying to take too many boxes down the hallway. <laughs> it's um, fine. Yep. Yep. Is it a big water mess now? You know how to make it go away? <laughs> Just get shut the curtains. <laughs> All right, so while Denny is beveling, I'll try to talk over him. I can see that Denny did not break okay. his I want I I want to make one more point. Okay. The beveler always, you always hold this tool straight up and down, not forward or backwards, not side to side, just straight up and down. If you, if you hold it side to side, you're going to start leaving little chatter marks behind it. Yeah. If you, if you lean it forward or backwards, you're going to either undercut or overcut one of the two. And John, John said it's a new set falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> no, John. Not yet. What would you, uh, are you going to answer a question here? Yeah. What are you going to answer a question about? That doesn't work. There you go. <laughs> Dang it, love. You're here. You're good. Um, I was just going to kind of go through some of the ones that we've missed. So. Let's see. Let me try, let me try to move the camera right, right quick. We're just beveling straight lines here. I need to move the camera. You can talk while I move. Um, so Clive talked about like leathers that are easier to carve than others. Yes, some import, well it's just some leathers in general, if they've been plated really heavily um, in order to delete any imperfections that the skin might have by compacting it together, that's going to make it really difficult for you to tool because it doesn't want to absorb water very easily. It also makes the grain really tight. Um, and so a lot of your import leather is like that. Like if you try to spritz down a piece of natural veg and the water just sits on top for a while before it absorbs, it's going to be a difficult piece of leather to tool. Um, we always just recommend Herman Oak. Herman Oak is very unique in its tanning method. You can go look at their website. We've got some tours. Um, Herman Oak is one of the few tanneries left in the world that uh, tans in a very old-fashioned style. It takes a lot longer than other tanning methods, but it produces a very tight grain on the back, which holds the tooling the best that, the best that it can. 
Um, it holds molding really, really well. So we're always going to recommend Herman Oak. Wicked and Craig makes fine leather. Import leather is fine leather. But if you're looking for the best tooling leather out there, it's Herman Oak. Yeah. That's what it is. Hands down. Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah. I wonder if this will, we talked about it. Oh. I wonder if it'll quiet it down some. Okay. I don't know if it will or not. But... Guys, tooling is loud and I need you to just get over it. <laughs> uh, we're trying to make improvements. We're not above improvements here. Constant improvement. I'm above it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Nope. Yeah, that be all right. Okay, there. Dean, it's a it horse is. hoof pick. I made oh, yeah. I made Tony and I matching belts, and I figured I would do them like this because he, him, and his family are horse people. I got a lot of horse questions from Liz the other day. I did. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I don't oh. know if it comes to. I feel like it's quieted it down. It does, it is muted. Oh, our set is not, yeah, we're fine. They knocked down the water cooler outside of our door. See, it's fine. Good. Yeah, it's fine. We're still good. Everything's good. Um, so they down the it might cooler. flood in here, but it's fine. <laughs> they broke the water cooler, knocked it over, tipped, knocked the first aid kit off the wall. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah those guys. Well, okay, well, Ryan's going to have quite the afternoon. Those guys out there need scuba gear. Um, Holly had a, a question about intersecting lines, but I can't see the end of it because it's not wrapping. Um, it's on Facebook. How do you deal with intersecting lines? Do you cut them or leave them all right. a space? Or leave a space? All right. I, I'm thinking she's talking about a line like right here. Okay. This line, if you will notice, goes all the way to the center. Right. Those are the ones you cut first. Goes, yes. Okay. That's the one I cut first. Yeah. That's the one I drew first. Uh, this line here just goes to that. So, I will bevel this line that goes all the way through to the center. Okay. Okay, now this line here, I'm going to bevel it, but I'm not... I, the main thing I want to do is not over bevel, bevel into that other line, the, the intersecting space. So I'll probably stop just a hair short. I'm going to stop right there. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's probably a 64th of an inch okay. yes. between where I stopped and, and this, this beveled line right here. Let's see. Yeah, you can so you guys, see that little space uh -huh. right there. That's where I stopped. Okay. And that's okay. When I when I do my background, that'll take care of that. Yeah. That's that's pretty good if you can do that. <laughs> if I can. Um what is it's a sixteen ounce, right? Yeah, hammer? this is a sixteen ounce. Sixteen mall. ounce. Uh but there again, the mall is just like the swivel knife. You know, use what you have. Yeah. It, it'll all work as long as you have something to bang that tool with. You know, <laughs> you know I like I like the mall because it has good. I need good to get one, and you can you have good rhythm with it. Yeah, uh, Jim Jim Linnell uses a mallet. He uses a mallet. Kevin Kevin Kevin's uses a mallet. mallet guy. Yeah, you know because that's all they've ever used. And I try to use great. my mallet though, but like the head is so long that it just like it feels like I have to like swing a like, hammer when I'm trying to tool. And I'm yeah, like, this... you need to choke way up on a hammer. Yeah. On a, a mallet, you know, whereas this, you're already up. I mean, the natural place to hold this is yeah. right here. And it just you know, kind of pivots. Already, and it's plus, like a teeter-totter. Plus, I can hold it like this, too, yeah. If you when you want to get really refined and in a delicate area. You know, but, but there again, you know, that's beside the point. Whatever you've got will work. Uh, I worked, the first saddle maker that I worked for used a, a stick. It was just like a piece of one by two, and he had he had one end of it wrapped with rawhide. That's what he stamped with. You know, that's, that's what a lot of those old timers used: a stamping stick instead of a mallet or a maul. Okay, I've got that flower beveled. Now, next I'm going to go to the stem. Remember our flower stem. We, we definitely want to get that. Beveled. 
Look at that flower just coming to life. Yeah. <laughs> it's alive. Yeah, Holly said she feels like this is her own personal lesson. <laughs> Look at you go, Denny. Do it right. Good. Yeah, the poundo is better. We we're going to glue poundo to the bottoms of these, but we were out last week and then I think we forgot about it yesterday. So, you know, if, if you ever get that other table in here, there's two of those big, thick uh, yeah. machinist blocks. If we could put one. The well, we're thicker, gonna get the, one. The thicker your marble is, the quieter. The quieter it yeah. will be. We're gonna put one in this corner. We have we had to order a new table from Grizzlies because we didn't have it either of the stands anymore. Jesse couldn't find them. So got the table ordered, but it's on back order right now. So it's ordered. We just don't know when it's gonna come in. And then this corner will be our setting corner. And then I don't know if we can figure out how to get you the tool in a corner, but maybe we could. I don't know. No. Yeah. You, no, you know. but then I wouldn't be talking to anybody. Yeah. I, you'd just be in the corner and I'd be over here, so. I think it makes a difference listening in my, my headphones. I think everybody said it made a difference, so. Oh, perfect. Everybody's happy with the well, pound note. Today I have to just go home after this video. Um, all right, so are you beveling at the same force all the way around the pedals? No. Okay. No, and I was just getting ready to mention that. Okay. Remember when I said to feather the end of those lines out that mm -hmm. end up out in the middle of nowhere? That's the way you want to bevel them, too. You know, start out just, just like normal, but when you get towards the end of that line, feather lighten it up. out. Just lighten it up and, and uh, bevel it out into a hairline. You have to bevel in the correct direction. You can't bevel out of a hairline. You right. have to bevel into it. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying, I guess, is this line right here, I'm going to start at this end and bevel to this end. That way I can lighten up right down here. You wouldn't want to start at your feathered end and try to work to your yeah. heavy end. Yeah, you, that's... I can't say you can't do that, but it's not desirable. <laughs> yeah. it would. It's hard to do that. Okay, now just listen to this. See how I did that? Did you mm -hmm. hear how I did that? Did you hear the lightness? Yes. Um, let's see here. Jamie was also wondering, what is your favorite beveling tool? Do you have a favorite? Or is there a sp uh, is there is there a certain tool for each job? I use I use this same type of a beveler on everything, but I have several different sizes. Okay. This is probably the most common size that I use right here. But you and have wider what, and narrower ones. Yes, there's wider mm -hmm. ones, there's narrow ones. Shoot, I've I've got some that I've made that are concave, some that are convex. Well, and I think nose on them. Yeah, whenever we um when we did our other video, the the master tooling class, the advanced tooling class that we did a few weeks ago, you had three different sizes mm -hmm. of your bevelers. And they're all this checkered, steep beveler. Yes, yes. Um, now he, he has a he has a set of Barry Kings, and those are probably the ones that he uses the most. But the ones that we have here in the store are just fine. Um, so pick yes, your right. price point for what you want to buy, and it is, you know, yeah. start here, spend $15 on a set of three, and then, you know, spend 150 on the Barry Kings whenever you're ready to do that. If I was, if I was just doing this project as a project – for myself, mm -hmm. I would have used, I've got a beveler that's about to, this is a, a little over a quarter inch wide. Yeah. I've got one that's about three eighths of an inch wide. I would and have used faster. it on the, on the long straight to yeah. border lines and maybe some of these long straight to, or long, really gradual arc lines. But uh, for the most part, this Thanks, this size here is, is the best that you would use. Cool. The, the most prominent. I tried to at him, but it doesn't look like, he, like he's here. Okay. Ron M, we're looking for you. Yeah, Ron M. If anybody knows who Ron M is, he won something last Friday at our giveaway. And um, he didn't email us, and we don't know who Rob M is, because that's pretty generic, Rob. Just going to let you know. So if you want what you won, then you're going to have to let us know who you are. So if anybody knows who Rob M is and has a way to get a hold of him, you know. Rob M, you might have won something really good, too. Oh, we picked out I think he picked he it out. <laughs> Do you... 
Benny, do you feel like the more expensive name brand bevelers are better than the cheap ones? This one works just as well as my Berry Kings. My Berry Kings are stainless steel. They're all handmade. You know, they probably have a longer life. Mm -hmm. This, the handles on these are a bit thicker. I, oh yeah, I mm -hmm. enjoy the Berry Kings because they're a little thinner type handle. They're the handle more like on the them are more one. like this. You yeah, can see the difference in the handle size. Yeah, <clears throat> but that's you know that's beside the point. You know whatever you've got that'll do the job is fine. There's a few people that said that they could stand in for Ron and if they needed. <laughs> I think if we move Sorry. this way, it'll it'll try to focus me, on what you're doing. Let me try and hold it without. Okay. Let me straighten this up. That's another thing, you guys. When you're tooling, your leather is going to want to start to curl up on you like that, you know. But if you'll just take each corner of this and kind of stretch it out, and kind of cup it a little bit, let it lay flatter on your uh, your bench, you'll be much better off. Because because if it's curled up and you hit it, you've got to go down to the granite before you ever make any contact yeah and so i guess the biggest most of the differences between like you know your beginner tools that that we stock and then your higher end ones that you can get like your bob beer tools and your your berry kings those are handmade machined tools um which is why they're so expensive most of you know the seven to ten dollar tools that we sell are a cast tool and so sometimes you might find an imperfection in um, the, the checkering, right, on the head. It may not be perfect because not somebody wasn't looking at it to quality control it and make sure it comes out of that mold, like, precisely okay. Sometimes you have, like, air bubbles, you know, in molded tools, and the head will break off. And then, you know, we'll replace it for you if that happens, maybe not, like, 10 years down the road, but... If you get it and you use it three times and the head pops off, you can call us and we'll send you a new one. Um, and, but, you know, if you're if you're figuring out if, like, this is the thing for you, you don't probably want to spend the amount of money on the Barry King tools yeah. to try it out and to see. And honestly, like, these are fine. Like, Denny still uses a lot of, you know, the $7 sure. to $10 tools sure, in his I collection. Do. Yeah. I do. Like, it's just... You know, make your investments where you want them, and spending fifty dollars to seventy-five per tool is expensive. Um, I would, get, I would probably buy cheap tools and Herman Oak leather before I bought expensive tools and cheap leather. That's exactly because right. it's not about the tool; it's how you use it. Good point. <laughs> I would invest in my leather because the leather does make a difference. Like the leather that you're carving on can make or break your project. Um, but probably the tools that you're using, it's just your experience and your skill with the tool. You got just, just realize there's no... There's no magic way to do this stuff. I mean, you you can spend thousands of dollars on tools and still not be able to do it. There was a guy that came in when I first started here and saw something I did. He said, I need the tools that you did that with because I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know, he had mm -hmm. never tooled anything in his life, and that's what he was thinking. If he bought the right tools, he could do that. And he could do that, but not until he was accustomed to it enough to do that. Yeah. You know, and you guys... Yeah, that's good. The backside of your work is always good. The only way to get better at this stuff is to do it. You know, you can't... You can't... People that took my beginner's class and then they came back a year later and said, I, I want to take your advanced class. And I say, have you been tooling a lot? And they say, no, I haven't tooled anything since I took the beginner's class. You know, and, and they basically had to start over. I had to teach them a beginner's class in the advanced class mm -hmm, time study. frame, you yeah. know. And 
I mean, they probably should just take the beginner class again. Yeah. Yeah. But people that people that took the beginner's class, a lot of them would come back the next week and take the the advanced class, and they were ready because they'd been tooling. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. They were warmed up. They had their mojo going. <laughs> Um, Rick, we just use, didn't he just use his packing tape, clear packing tape for the back of his leather if he's going to tape it. He did not tape these because we're not matching them up to anything. So like getting some stretches of the end of the world, plus they're pretty thick. Um, but if he were taping it, he would use packing tape. Um, yeah, somebody asked if you were actually going to like no, no, no. Remember, we need okay. we need you to. Oh yes, I remember. On that. the backside, yeah. As long as it's on the backside, you can have it wherever you want on the backside. Okay. okay. <laughs> do the do the tools wear out over time? Did you guys talk about that? Sure, you can wear tools out. Uh, as far as your stamping tools. Of course, tools? I have a Barry King beveler that I use on a daily basis. Had it for years and years. You know the the front edge of it here is getting kind of shiny. Mm -hmm. Still works fine for me. Okay, so I have some people are being like, oh, you know, we can't see past your hand because you're tooling. But maybe you guys should really like look at the way that Denny is holding the tool and how his hand is on the table. Like he is supporting his tool with his other fingers on the surface. Yeah. So like. Like, for people that are just out there and they want to hold their tools like this and try to do things, like, just up here. Look at the way that Denny is holding his tool. His hand is literally touching the table. He has, a, he has like, a firm. He knows exactly where this tool is, and he can scooch it along. So, I mean, take notice of that. Yeah. yeah. He has, like, three or four feet. Like, he has almost all of his fingers on that, except yeah. for his pinky is on the granite. The rest of it is yeah. is on the tool so that he has the most control over that tool. Yeah. And that's another thing. You guys, I'm I'm actually walking this beveler along. When you first start out, if you've got to go like this, that's fine. This is not a speed uh -huh. event right here. <laughs> well, and, and you, you know. can just see, as long as you're pressing it down the same amount of area, you're, you're not leaving your track marks. Yeah. As long as you're tapping your tool in the same amount of pressure. Yeah. Each, Time. Yeah, the, the thing is... I mean, is, it's just going to take you forever, the, but... <laughs> yeah, well, it just takes longer, but You're getting but pretty experience. soon you'll get tired of going, bam, bam, yeah. bam. You know, you'll so get you'll tired of that and figure out how to make your tool walk. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, that's all there is to it. But, <clears throat> you know, the main thing is hold your tool straight up and down. Mm -hmm. Don't Don't go too far in between strokes. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, I feel like you probably even overlap by about half. Yeah, half or more. Yeah. Yeah, we use lead shot in our weights. Lead shot. Well, one of the Denny has. I don't think, think we use lead in the new ones. Oh, well, that's because we it's, it's getting it's getting difficult. They will be two pounds filled with something that is heavy, and you can get two pounds in that size of a thing. <laughs> nope, Denny. Thank you. <laughs> Just keep me lined out. I, that's what I do. That's okay. Let's see. We had a first time, a first time chatter like home from Germany. Another Germany. I don't know what happened to Marcus from Germany. Oh, Since yeah. we have a proverb here, a good artist can do good work with bad tools. That's right. Well, another Arnold. thing too. Don't. Don't get just the cheapest tool that you can find. I mean... Yeah, I mean, there are, like, Amazon right now, I think, has some, like, packs where you can get, like, 25 tools for $10. Guys, those aren't going to last you more than, like, a minute. They're probably aluminum yeah. or some Like, I don't know what they are, but I... Well, I don't know. A lot of those tools are like using a club. <laughs> you know, I mean, they have no definition to them at all. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not... You know, of course, we want to sell you everything that you want to buy from us. That's for sure. Well, sure. But the thing is, if you go to some place like Hobby Lobby, I guess I'll use that for an example. You know, they sell just the cheapest stuff that they can. And uh, 
you know, it has no definition to it. And people come here trying to say, I, I can't make my tools do this. Well, the tools aren't made to do what you're trying to do. Yeah. All right, guys. So it looks like we're beveled. Yeah, we're beveled. Okay. All right. Next step. We've done step number six. Number seven is the background. And I don't think I even need... This is our number A888. And I'm going to... Generally, it, this tool has a sharp end and a... Uh, where am I? You're over here next to Liz. Yeah. It has a sharp end and then it has a, a blunt end. And the sharp end, is, of course, is where you want to get up in all these little tight corners. Can you go toward... Can you go? Oh. There you go. And I'll Perfect. generally, I'll generally just try to go around the perimeter. Kind of like a uh, teardrop shape. Yeah, it's a teardrop shape. Good point. But after you've done your perimeter, then just go in and fill in all the rest of that field. And it doesn't matter where you start here. Just make sure you're in a background area and not. <laughs> Don't do what you don't want to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, so somebody asked about using metal stamps on leather. Yeah, you can use metal stamps on leather. However, we don't recommend that you use leather stamps on metal. So leather is really soft and pliable and, and smushy. Um, so if you have metal stamps and you want to give it a try on leather, then by all means, see if whatever your metal stamps are, if you like the look when they stamp in metal or in leather. Although sometimes I will say... It's a lot easier to get definition in metal. You don't have to have as much relief or there's not necessarily as, as much texture difference. Um, and I don't know. I mean, play with it. Get some scrap leather. Use some scrap leather, whatever. Play with it, but don't go the other way because yeah. these tools are not made to be used on metal. Yeah, if you They're use these on metal, you'll just ruin the tool. Yeah, so. And maybe a piece of metal. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the, here again, I like my leather to be fairly dry when I'm doing my background. I get a lot crisper background out of it. Uh, what tool is that again, Denny? This is an A888. 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 How did it get to be noon already? Is it? <laughs> yeah. This might need to be... Are you getting a text about the lunch date again? No, I just... Okay. <laughs> we got something to do this afternoon. You can finish your breakfast for lunch. Vanessa, we have four cameras. We have three in front of us and one above us. Does Denny always background from the line inwards? Uh, no. I never do anything the same way <laughs> twice, I don't think. Except for following his instructions. Yeah, I, yes. Do as I say, not as I do. Remember that. Sometimes it is, though. You know, you can get the line, make sure you're getting it next to however you want it, and then you fill the middle in. Yeah. You know, I mean, background however you like. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's background. You're just you're just stamping that whole background yeah. down. Now, do you have any tips for people like you don't want to over background or? Yeah. When you when you get up into a corner, like, uh, can you if? Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to get right in that little little smidgen of a tight corner, and then they'll they'll be over on on top of this flower stem or on top of that uh, chicken neck. That's too you far. You know, and that's too far. Yeah. You're better off stopping just a hair short than you are going too far. And for the person that was asking, Denny did mark all these things. You can see each of these little spot has like that little dot in it. That's where he went through after he got done cutting and was like, okay, these are my backgrounds. Yeah, and he put a little mark in them. Yeah. Zachary Norton was. Yeah. And you, you know, when that yes, dot that I made you guys put on there, you don't have to do that for every project. I don't. But when you're first starting, that's... That's a dead giveaway as, as to which side of the line to bevel on. Yeah. And now it's simple. It'll be simple for you to pick out what, where your background areas are. After you get your background stamped, then you can see what your pattern looks like. Because most of the time, most beginners look at this as just a whole bunch of lines. They don't look at it as 
the features of, of this uh, picture that they're doing. Yeah. Um, somebody had a question about the dryer leather. So by the time you get to the backgrounding part, and I mean, this is pretty, like it, it works. And like, this is a good like method to go about your process of doing the tooling. But Denny's at a spot right now where his leather is pretty dry. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm done with my background. Next step is my uh, pear shader. And I want a lot more moisture in it. Exactly. That. So like this has worked out to where we've got to this part. If your leather is too wet when you start to background, because especially depending on how much backgrounding you can do, that can really be a main cause of stretching in your leather is because you're covering so much of your leather. Like you're pushing it down and pushing it down and pushing it down. And so if your leather is super wet, you're just going to stretch it all out when you go to do your background it's, if it's too wet. Stretch is real bad and it just looks mushy. Exactly. You don't get these really crisp. You see how much definition is? in that guys you see how much definition you've got there and then if you're doing the bar grounding where you have those tiny little dots you get nice crisp dots because it's dry enough to just hold it and not mush around yeah. especially as you may go over a spot you know one to two times like if you have to go over something twice you're just going to end up with a big mushy mess if yeah. it's too wet but if you're if you're dry at the right moisture content um it'll be nice and crisp for you it'll seed itself I wet that again. There again, I didn't wet it as much as I did the very first time. I just yeah. I just made it where the, the whole thing looked wet. Okay, I'm going to get my pear shader right here. And the pear shader, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it has, it's shaped like a teardrop. It has a, a small a end and a, or a pear, <laughs> small end and a fat end. And for these, I'm going to start. Everything I do, I'm going to go in basically the same order. I'll start with the flower mm -hmm. and then start with your main it. feature, just like we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to start with this flower and I'm going to start a little way, a little ways away from that to the tip of that petal. But remember our flower center, remember our flow of, of the pattern. I want to aim towards that, that flower center. And this is a tool that you don't want to hit. You don't want to hit at an angle or straight up and down. You want to hit at an angle. You never, you don't want to use, you don't want to make the impression of the whole tool. You aren't trying to make that impression. You're trying to make that impression. Let's see if the overhead sees it any differently. Oh yeah. So you want, you want this cute little one here. Yeah. So not they just. call this they call this a pear shader because you're trying to shade areas of this this pattern. Well I was gonna say it kind of fades the way you tilted it, it fades it out towards the fat end. Right. Right. And when I get into these chicken necks, I'm gonna switch around and, and use the fat end of this tool. Mm -hmm. It just depends on on the shape that you're you're working on. But I'm going to go like that. I'm not going to go all the way to the flower center. But if I followed through, it would go right, right. to that center. Still following your point. And if you if you can hear, I'm lightening that, lightening up with <laughs> each, each stroke too. Okay, I've done the flower. Now I'm going to start with these uh, chicken necks. And I'm going to switch around and use the fat end. But I'm going to tip it. You don't want to overuse this tool. A lot of people might want to go all the way down that area, but I don't want to. I just want I'm just going to shade the end of that feature. Now, see, this is a big area, so as a pear shader, I can I can take this and kind of move it side to side. Mm -hmm. See what I did there? I just... The tool's only only. Put it by your leather work. Just right here. There it is. Perfect. Yeah, the tools, the tools that wide, but that area that I just did is probably half again that wide mm -hmm. because I, you can move it around. I'm sure glad you're here to tell me which way to move. That's okay. <laughs> what I'm doing, I'm, I'm lightening up with every 
every little tap that I make. Likes the cold air from the door. It's a woman that made crazy people. It's Matt's toaster. I feel uh, like I haven't seen Matt's toaster in a in a while. Can I can I point something? Certainly. I'll spin it spin it around at, until I oh, right right the the top the pedal leaf that's pointing towards it. Can we look at that? I don't. So people are the the one that's on the right side. Yep, yeah, just hold, just hold it up there. Okay. Don't, don't worry about making little mistakes. The the tip of the flower was right there, and we pear shaded and just just nicked it. Don't don't throw a fit about it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. That's not desirable. You don't want to do it, but, but don't. Yeah, but, if you do, don't it, throw it away. It. But yeah. then he didn't start crying. He didn't do anything. He just moved on and kept you on pear shading. You don't have the camera on my face. Oh. <laughs> well, let me zoom in on it. There's big <laughs> crocodile we'll tears. A, a tear. <laughs> big crocodile tear. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now I've pear shaded everything. I've gone. I didn't do anything to my flower stem. Okay. All right. Step number nine. It says stuttered the flower petals with the camouflage. Ooh. Now, that's just what I call this. I don't know what other people call it, but I'm going to take this camouflage tool. And this is another tool that you don't hold straight up and down. You always tip it. Because I'm not trying to... Where am I? I'm not trying to make the impression of this edge of the tool. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make the impression of these lines that are back here. So, I'm going to start a little ways away from this flower center. And give it a tap. If you'll notice... You can't really, you can faintly see that one edge, but that's not the main yeah. part. Now I'm going to move it just a bit. Oh, you're going to stutter all the yeah. way up your little yeah. pear. All I did was add some texture to, to that to flower petal. Oh, okay, well, that's fun. So I'm going to do that to all four flower petals. Yeah, if I would have been doing this project and threw it away when we, if I made my first mistake, it would probably have been when I spritzed the leather. <laughs> I've okay. probably done that wrong. All right, You're I've done here. that whole thing. I've done <laughs> Look at that. all the way around. It just it, it did several things. One of the things that it did is it uh, camouflaged the end of that. Uh, mm -hmm. You of blended that it. You blended the line. end. Yeah, but another thing, it just added some texture to that plain flower petal. Okay, now I don't teach. I don't show people this a lot, but. I'm going to go all the way around this flower center with this camouflage tool. And why do you say you don't show people this a lot? Well, this is kind of a, an advanced deal that I'm showing here, but I hate just leaving it like this. So, But I'm just going all the way around that flower center. See what I see? How it darkened that? What it's doing is it's making the illusion of, of that flower petal kind of diving in towards that flower center. That's all I'm going to do with that uh, camouflage tool. Now I'm going to take my vayner, this V715, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is another tool that you don't hit straight up and down. You always tip a vayner. Because I'm not trying to make that. I'm making that. Turn. Uh, can you hold your hand up there again? Let me turn you. Can you make the same? Let's see, I can't see. Put it on there like you're going to hit it again. Can you turn it like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to tip it. I don't want to, I don't want to hit straight down on it and make the impression of the whole tool. I'm just using one end of this tool. And we're not doing geometric stamping here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. Now I'm going to get... I'm going to get right up against this flower center on the edge of this flower petal. Just follow the follow the curvature of that flower petal. Get right up on the edge. You see what that did? Right here. There you go. Whenever you're drawing your patterns, Denny, do you take into account the angle of your vayner tool? No. I probably should. Just a happy accident? But I have several different vayners. There's, there again, you know... When you start doing this, you become a tool collector. 
you know, and the main reason for that is you can do different things and give different effects with different shaped tools. I mean, there's probably a hundred different veiners out there or more. Yeah, or there's more. a lot. All different shapes, all different sizes, all different arcs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, that's all I'm going to do with that. Now I'm going to go back and get my flower center. Remember I said we're going to reset the flower center later? Now is the time. And I'm just going to set it on there as well as I can. If I would have stamped it really hard to begin with, this would probably wouldn't work out very well. But since I stamped it lightly, I can change the shape of that. Now our flower is basically complete. It's got a center that. again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so difficult, Tony. <laughs> now... <laughs> I'm going to go back to my veiner and I'm going to get, I'm going to get right up against this flower petal right here. But what I'm going to do, I'm, for your sake, I'm going to make myself a little dot. That's an aim point right there that I made. Okay. And I'm going to take this veiner and I'm going to get right up against the flower petal mm -hmm. and aim right towards that dot. Remember, I'm not hitting this tool straight up and down. I'm, right. I've got it too tipped. I'm just using one end of it. But I aimed right towards that dot. I'm going to move it over just a little bit, but I'm going to aim towards that dot again. Hey, Denny, will you say welcome to Christina's Leather? Welcome, Christina's Leather. Glad to have you. Yeah, she brought 20 people in here with Wow. Her. Yeah. All right. But I'm going to keep going across here, get right up against that, that flower petal every time, move it just a little bit from the last stroke, but always aim towards that one point. So I'm just fanning it across this flower stem. See what I've done there? Nice. If if I would have if if I wouldn't have fanned it across and aimed towards that center every time, I would have just gone across like that and it would look right. Not really nice. No, it would just I could, be... I could name it a lot of different things. <laughs> All right. Now, last step other than our finish cuts is our mule's foot. The only place I'm going to use this mule's foot is right here on this flower stem. Here, there again, you want to kind of tip this tool back a little bit. Stay pretty close together and lighten each stroke up a little bit until it just kind of fades out to nothing. Yeah. See how we did that? All right. Now then, let's get our, these are our, we're ready for our finish cuts, and this is the final deal. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to start with each flower petal again. You can do oh, finish cuts. In hang on. We're, Tony, we're on the other camera now, because then he's doing his swivel knife cuts. Oh. No. Oh, uh, hang on, Danny. Don't do anything yet. This one. Just be calm. Hold did on. You, did you talk about anything and I missed it? Sorry, we got raided, so I was talking to the, the raid that came in and making the, making sure they all got welcomed in. Everybody is very excited to have some inspiration to tool <laughs> leather. Uh, who, don't do your cuts yet. I'm still... I'm gonna I just something. had to work on that one that I started and then stopped in the middle oh, of it. Oh, okay. You, okay. There was... You can pet Luna. Blue, I'll pet Luna. Blue <laughs> somebody was on YouTube said this was worth its weight. They hadn't. They were having issues with the camouflaging tool and oh, just yeah. a little bit of help that you showed them on that. Oh, well, yeah. And then uh, Penny it was, she's like, this free video is going to cost me so much money. <laughs> now, she, now she needs to get some tools to... Actually, there are only seven tools here, that, seven stamping tools that you need to And do we have, have those in a kit? Are those tools... No, we don't. All? We should probably put those in a, in a Denny's novice tool kit. That That'd be a great right. idea. That would be good. Marketing genius at its finest. All right, go ahead. We're ready? Yeah. All right. Finish cuts are everyone's downfall because everyone thinks they have to do something extravagant, but finish cuts you can overdo easily. Remember the flow of your pattern, the center of that flower. I'm going to start up here at the top of this flower petal. And I'm going to make a cut. I'm going to start. I'm going to slice into the leather fairly deeply and immediately start to lighten up. But I'm going to aim towards that flower center. Boop. 
we're here now. But see how it just fades out? I started pretty deep and mm -hmm. just faded out. But if you follow that, those cuts, they will head right towards that flower center. If you don't do that, it, it's never going to look right. People say, well, why don't my finish cuts look right? Well, because you're doing them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> But anyway, I'm going to go around all four flower petals and make these two cuts on it. And you can do finish cuts a million different ways. These are just the, this is just the way that I'm going to do these. Okay, I've gone all the way around, made, How made cute those is that? two cuts on every side. Now I'm going to go to my center and come out. And now I'm going to the flow of of this one that's coming out is going towards the tip of that mm -hmm. flower petal. So I'm going to go like that and like that. And if you'll notice, those aren't straight cuts. There's a little bit of an mm -hmm. arc to them, but they're headed towards that, uh, oh. that the tip of that flower petal. Let me move this hand just a little bit. There we go. There you go. Great job. Just remember... Just start deep and immediately lighten up and let them float out into a hairline. That's all I'm going to do to that. That The flower is done now. Okay. So now I'm going to go and, and start with all our chicken necks. There again, you don't want to overdo these. A little bit goes a long ways. I'm just going to make a couple little cuts on each one of these. Going all the way around the inside of this flower. Oh, she's like all the way down. And these finish cuts are something you're just going to have to look at a whole bunch of different other people's work. Look how they do their finish cuts and try to emulate the ones you like. I was listening to Kevin. Someone was talking about his finish cuts and said, how do I make them better? And Kevin says... I can tell you everything that I want to tell you. The best thing to do is to watch someone else mm -hmm. and look at someone else's finished cuts. Hey, Elizabeth. No. That's why I always love it when he comes in and does the, the tooling on Friday because that's really Kevin's specialty. Like, he makes... Cheers, everybody. Um, he makes just the best... Yeah. Just finger carving. He is a very good... Very good... With I wonder why is it called finger carving? Cuts. Do you know? Because you're just using your... You're just... I don't know. Okay. I don't know either. <laughs> I could lie. <laughs> you know what? That happened to me at the dentist last week. So they always ask me. Like, I have pretty good dental genetics. I am blessed with really good dental genetics. And I don't tend to have too many issues with my teeth. But I am not a flosser. Like, I struggle with that. I'm sure most of us struggle with that. My husband is amazing at it. He has the best dental hygiene, but he has the worst dental genetics. So he just perpetually has bad teeth no matter how well he takes care of them. And he kind of hates me a little bit for my lack of having to do that. But anyways, I'm sitting in the chair and she's talking to me and she had like, there's like this one spot that she had to clean back here. And then she was just like, now do you floss? And I almost was just like, you know, gave her some BS answer that was like, oh yeah, you know, whatever. And I just kind of stopped and I sighed and I was like, no, no, I don't do that. I was like, I know. And then she just, she just died laughing because she was just like, Thank you for your honesty. Like, people lie to me about this all the time. And she's like, I'm looking at your mouth. Like, I know what you do in here. Like, sure, I'm asking you the question, but it's more of just like a let's have a conversation while my hands are in your mouth situation. She's like, I know when people don't floss. And she's like, and then they'll just be like, oh, yeah, I do that all the time. And she's like, no. No, but she just really appreciated that I was like, no, no, I just, no, I'm bad at that. Anyways. <laughs> We had a good, we had, we had a bonding moment over my honesty. Bonding <laughs> over non floss. <laughs> Anyways. All right, you guys, we're done. We've done this. That we did it all? That's we, it. We have done it all. That's the, that's coaster number one. So Friday we'll do coaster number two. Sure. No? no? Oh, it's trading oh, cards. Oh, yeah. Oh, is Friday trading cards? Yeah, it's the last Friday of the month. All right. Okay, so Friday we'll I'll have just Kevin use that in here. One. Yeah, and then you'll be done. <laughs> sure, I mean, this could be a trading card. I could make number two for a trading card, or number okay. three. 
Um, the boys in R&D are making us a whole big hide so that whenever we do have our training, I don't think it'll be done by Friday. I don't know. I guess I could ask Andy, see where it's at. But um, they're going to make us a whole big hanger that we can hang up with everybody's cards that they've been sending in. So they're no longer just in the slap board. So that's exciting. I'm excited. Excited for that. Or we might just lay it out on the table because we always have like the rest of this table. Yeah, we can just lay it out and have a camera on it and look at them. Yeah, so I've brought some in. You brought some training cards in? Yes, I did. Uh, what did I do with them? Thanks, bourbon. I thought I did. I thought they were in your oh, basket. Oh, here they are. Okay. I got them out. I know you all wanted to hear about my dental hygiene. <laughs> I'm glad I could share. Yeah, Denny did this fun one. He did He did something different. There's not even a flower on here. Just a bunch of chicken necks and amoebas. What are, what are those guys called? Fiddleheads, that's what they call those Fiddle swirls. Heads. Oh, well, there's a there's a, such thing as a fiddlehead fern, and that's the, kind of the seed pod for it. Yeah. So then he did all. That's a different flower. Yeah, I'm not like too a proud of that flower. I would do it <laughs> better the next time. Well, maybe you can do that one on Friday. Maybe you can that's do it better. what I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> all righty, guys. So trading cards on Friday, which means I need to remind Kevin that he needs to do trading cards What's on the Friday. Card thing, Liz? Uh, trade cards. So Jim Linnell started it. He's got his own group, but we have begun doing it. So the last Friday of every month, I have Denny and Kevin come in here and they will make one to how many ever trading cards they can get done in their hour. Um, and then you guys are welcome to make your own trading card and send it in. And then we will send you one of Denny or Kevin's. Or if you send us two, I'll send you a Denny and a Kevin. Or if you would like to request a maker, we can do that also. Um, but yeah, so we have a ton of customers at this point have sent in their trading cards. We're starting to get a very nice collection, which is why we needed to organize them somehow. Um, so we're making a little holder for them. But yeah. They can go up, they can go up and come down so we can keep a clean background. Back exactly. There. So yeah, so doodle, doodle on some little card shaped things and they don't have to be this size. They can, Kevin hates doing things small. So he always just cuts his own shape anyways, cause yeah, we don't have a choice. strong willed like that. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the piece that, you, that we did today, that little coaster, Denny, how would you finish it up? I would... He's going to oil it, and then he's going to antique it. Yeah. Just so a light, we'll, we'll light coat of oil. And, uh... Yeah. Holly, always oil and then dye. So oil first when it's nice and natural, just like this, and then dye. I don't... Denny, do you ever oil after you dye? Sure. Okay. So you can do that too. Sure. If, oil, uh, dye, oil. The thing about dye, it's going to suck a lot of the, a lot of any oils that are that are in your leather. It'll suck them out. Mm -hmm. So, so it definitely needs some oil in it. Yeah, guys, this is the same. This is the same Herman Oak right here. This is Herman Oak that's been around for a minute, and this is fresh Herman Oak. But this is what it turns into when you just leave it natural and antique it. That's all that Denny's done here. Yeah. He oiled it, finished it, quick shine, and then antiqued it, and then quick shined it again, and then it's set there yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. Um, how old is this? That's three or four months old. Three or four months old. That's the color that you can get, and it will just kind of keep yeah. aging beautifully with time. So that is tooling for beginners. Tooling for beginners. Novice. Novice. Novices. Not beginners. You guys aren't beginners. You're no, novices. No, you're novices. And you aren't amateurs now. Yeah, Matt, but you if you need to die, then you have to do it before you resist. So that, that was my only caveat that you have yeah. there. We've got a website ready for international orders. We're just making sure that it does the figuring of the shipping rates correctly. Oh, cool. For Bourbon Leather was asking about. He's like, I don't really like talking on the phone, but I know that's the only option to order from Canada. Yeah. We have, a, we have an Amazon. Do we still have the Amazon account? In Canada, I think we you? have. I think we have Amazon FBA where we send up. Uh, a few mm, things. Uh, I, maybe I can't remember. I haven't asked in a while. I know that there was like some weird tax stuff that we were dealing with. Like we had to get like an accountant in Canada to yeah. help us manage. I don't know the whole the whole tax side of selling in two countries was a little bit different or doing the the fulfilled by Amazon. Up there. Anyway, um, well, after party. well, hang on. Oh. Just before we go today, I just want to inform our lovely customers. We have had another loss at Springfield Leather um, this week. Um, it was a lot more sudden than Jeff's. And I don't know how many of you know her. She, uh, Jennifer Thomas, she worked on our retail showroom for a really long time. She, la she taught a lot of our weaving and bead classes. I've been wearing all of my woven stuff this week. Um, she 
I, we're, we're still not 100% sure what happened, but she was at Christmas with her mother's and she just collapsed and um, wasn't able to be um, revived. So she has been working in our purchasing department for several years now. Um, if anybody knows Jen or has talked to Jen, um, we are going through her loss as well right now. So just, I don't know, guys. 2022 has not been a fun year for uh, a lot of things, but uh, we appreciate all of you guys out there. So if anybody knew Jen, um, had taken her classes, or, um, you know, she ordered a lot of leather for a lot of people. She did a lot of the custom stuff and things. So just keep her family in your thoughts and in your minds um, over the next coming week as we try to wrap up um, all of that. So we will see you guys tomorrow for live shopping, and then we'll be back on Friday for trading cards. So hope you have a great afternoon.